This is a University of Otago podcast. Right, it comes to our time for our next presen- presentation. And I'd like to welcome Hester and her team. She has some students with her, Zoe and Scott, and lecturer Victoria. Victoria can't make it today. Oh, Victoria she's can't make it together. Oh, so it's just today. Vic, uh, Zoe and uh, Scott. Scott. Yeah. Over to you, Hester. Thank you. Oh, I won't need that. So, well, I'm going to start with the highlights, one of the highlights, and it's going to be a video. Okay, so I'll start it right away, and I'll tell you more about the program after. I think I'm like everybody else who come to the program for an answer of some sort of question that we ask, either for our lives or for our professional career. Bouncing work, family life and study and doing that in a way that was acceptable for my family and the way I wanted to work was really key. And with the online system, you literally just click a button and you're all live there. Like you, you can literally be ready, you know, within 10 seconds and you're in a group session having a chat about your work. The only way I was going to do further study was if it was part time. And um, the only way that I was going to be able to get the benefits of a top university was if it was online. My wife and I, we own a couple of restaurants. I own my own accounting practice and I've had 20 years working with large firms here in New Zealand and overseas. So I've had a pretty diverse range of experiences. It makes me a better advisor in terms of that range, but it also makes me a better teacher because I think what students are looking for is they're looking for a practical connection. In my line of work, it's fantastic because all the subjects that I do are applicable to what I do day to day. So if I'm learning about finance or accounting or marketing, or if it's about operational excellence, they're they're things that I can literally take into the office and and start to apply those uh, that very next day. They can talk to each other, it's an open forum. So it's effectively the same as sitting in a lecture room uh, with people up close. The economics class isn't just about me delivering, it's about um, them being able to interact with each other and be able to apply economics uh, to their own businesses. I work in a technology world and I work in an international setting and more and more in a real world setting you have to work with multinational teams and you work in a virtual environment and you have to hold a room, not real room anymore, but also virtual room. The thing about an MBA was never going to be a waste, it was always going to be used in some capacity. Whether I stayed in the construction industry or moved into a different industry or went back to Europe, it was going to be transferable skills that would be beneficial regardless of the future. The MBA is like the empowering step to be able to actually be taken seriously. Overall, the the programme has to be reputable and it's a credit. Otago programme is accredited internationally, which put it on a level playing field with, you know, international recognition if I wanted to travel overseas. And that was really important for me too, to have a really solid university name behind the MBA. Having that opportunity to embrace learning again in a really interactive way is really motivating and, and I think it's, it's quite rewarding. So it's definitely something that people should think about if they're looking to upskill and, and build their capability in, in, their, in their current roles. Okay. Well, um, the three students that you see who are talking in the video were from our first two cohorts and the two lecturers uh, one of them teaches uh, accounting, both uh, online and on campus. The other is located in Wellington, but she teaches economics. And uh, regardless of distance, they are able to teach online and meet our students. So um, it's the system that we have put in place not only allows the students to learn from wherever they are, it also allows the teachers the lecturers themselves to teach from wherever they are. So well, I'm Hester. I take care of web marketing for the executive programs. So, well, um, I help coordinated the uh, development and rollout of the Otago Online MBA. I'm no longer involved in the day-to-day running of it. One of my colleagues have taken over that. So I have roped in initially three charming co-presenters, but unfortunately one of them fell sick today, uh, and that is Vicky, who is the lecturer. So I have with me two co-presenters, uh, Zoe, who is here with me to, 
now. And uh, Scott is going to talk to you via Zoom, which is the platform we use for the online MBA. I'm going to give you a very quick introduction to the program itself, and then I'll let you uh, listen to the people who are closely involved in the, in the program. Now, these two pictures are screenshots of the orientation for two of our cohorts. And you can see, of course, the smiling and happy faces <laughs> as they join the program. The orientation is done before the lecture starts. So what's going to happen when they're into the 10th paper? Are they going to be still smiling and happy? So I'm going to let Scott tell you about his experience later via Zoom. Okay. Now, um, yeah, I just lost my device. Now, uh, let me give a very quick introduction to ourselves. The executive programs run two mainstream of activities. One of them is the executive education, where we run the personalized short courses that are tailored to corporate requirements. And the other one is the uh, Otago MBA, which the MBA stands for Master of Business Administration, and we run both uh, online and on-campus classes. Now, um, about the Otago MBA. The, we emphasize the practical application of business theories. And this is evident in the way we carry out our curriculum, which involves a lot of case studies, as well as business projects. And we also choose lecturers who, are, who has a very strong practical as well as academic background. We take on a very st strong international focus. And this is, uh, aside from uh, business, international business papers, we also encourage our students to go on international exchange uh, to further widen the international perspective. Zoe here, for example, it, it has chosen to go to Copenhagen for her international exchange. And of course, in addition to all this good stuff, we also, we also run uh, professional development workshops as well as a mentor program for our students. Currently, we rank fifth in Oceania, according to Ed Universal Master in the category of full-time MBA. Now, this is the picture of our cohort one and two, the online classes, when they come on campus end of last year for the uh, professional development workshop that we have organized for them and a get-together. But of course, by the time they come, for the professional workshop. They have known each other very well, um, especially those from the same cohorts because they've been working in group projects and they've been interacting with each other during the lecture itself. And the purpose of this get-together is to further build on the camaraderie that they have already been uh, building up. Now, what is the driving force behind our going online. Um, I would say the most important is the last that I've mentioned in this slide. It's actually the students. And our, we, are very, we are very much a student-focused program. We recognize that there are students out there who may not want to make it to, or are unable to make it on campus or to study full-time. They may have good jobs or family commitments that make it not possible for them to come on campus. And of course, behind that is all the enabling technology, you know, the pervasive use of high-speed broadband, as well as the quality improvements in e-conferencing technology, which allow us the quality that we need in terms of audio and video features. And what have we achieved? What do we think we have achieved? I think we have achieved the uh, delivery, I know <laughs> Sarah doesn't like the word delivery, but yes, uh, we believe that we have delivered a quality MBA education live online. We use the same curriculum, um, the same pool of lectures as far as we can, and the students sit through the similar assignments and examinations. We also put them through the same selection requirements, so, um, which incidentally also 
include uh, requirements that say they have to have minimum three year work experience before they would be considered for the program. So which makes it all the more important to us that we are able to deliver a distance learning option of the program. Um, because once somebody has already been in the workforce, it means involving giving up a job, which is a very big barrier. Our lectures are delivered live in the evenings. And during the live lectures itself, the students could participate in breakout groups where they would review case studies, discuss amongst themselves, and then present their findings to the class. We also organize virtual syndicate rooms for them so that they can uh, discuss their group assignments together at their own organized times. So those are available to them at all times. So yes, we have used our on-campus as a reference, <laughs> and uh, we have emulated very closely in the virtual world. Now, where are we now? Okay, we started, oh, um, I, have I have to correct the date. It's May, it's May 2015, which is last year. So we started our first class in May last year. Mm, to date, our student number has exceeded two and a half times that of our on-campus. These are active student numbers. That means they are enrolled in a paper. And uh, if you're talking about equivalent full-time numbers is almost two times. So, uh, so within two years, we have actually overtaken tremendously the numbers of our on-campus. And we are running five online cohorts and one on-campus class. Now, um, initially when we started, we were intending to take only one class a year. <laughs> within the very first year, we have to take a second class because uh, application coming in was so rapid and also we're getting very very good students and this year we decided we're going to run three but of course next year we're going to pull it back to two because we don't think we can handle three classes a year we just don't have the resources to do that well uh, for every paper we run a meet paper survey and an end of paper survey the purpose of the meet paper survey is for us to get feedback so that if there's anything wrong that we are not aware of, we can put in corrective actions. And of course, the end of paper is the overall wrap up and conclusion. I took particular interest in the feedback of the, of the first paper. And obviously because I helped to develop and roll it out. So this comment from one of the students, I don't know who he is because the feedback is anonymous particularly left an impression, and I'm going to share with you what he or she said. I was pleasantly surprised with the course content. If I'm honest, I thought it might have been a bit boring and kind of obvious, sorry. However, I found it absolutely fascinating, completely proved me wrong. So this student is really candid. He tells of his uh, expectations before the uh, start of the class and then how we have uh, exceeded that expectation. Well, uh, when preparing for this um, presentation, I was wondering how good really is our, the quality of our online education, what we have uh, put together for the online MBA. And so I thought perhaps I could put my limited statistical analysis skills to use. So with the help of YouTube and the Excel spreadsheet, <laughs> I have do a comparison. I've done a comparison between our online uh, students' grades and compare it to that of the on-campus for papers where they share the same lecturers. And so there are four papers to date where they share the same lecturers. And perhaps it's not a, it's, perhaps it's not a surprise. But I found no statistical difference. So if I'm to conclude from that, I would say that our online MBA has done an equally good job as our on-campus in terms of delivering business education. So... Um, I'm going to 
pass the floor to two of our students. Zoe has done classes on both the online MBA and the on-campus MBA. So sh I'm, I'm, I will have her uh, share with you her experiences on both. And later, I'm going to have Scott, who is in the first cohort and into his 10th paper. He juggled life as a father, a legal, uh, a police detective, as well as a legal officer. So, and of course, right now, study online. And I'm going to let you let them share with you their experiences. So, Zoe. Thanks, Esther. So, I didn't actually set out to do an MBA. I started doing health management, which is half public health and half MBA papers. And then I did one of the MBA papers last year, and I realized how well run the whole department was, and just it really, it, I clicked with it. I really enjoyed it. It was sort of very different from the science background I had. So I did um, one of the MBA papers last year, and then decided to do it full time on campus this year. Um, why I ended up doing some of the online papers was because it allowed me to take off a semester in the middle of this year, which was very much needed because the full-time MBA is extremely intense. It is basically an 8 a.m. to a 6 p.m. job every day, including Saturdays and Sundays sometimes. But the online MBA, it really surpassed my expectations. So I didn't think it would be well suited to doing group assignments which is one of, the biggest, um, it's one of the biggest things we do in the MBA class. But I was really surprised with Zoom. They were able to, you could work in a syndicate really well, and also they were break, when you had breakouts in the middle of the class, it was often random, so that gave you a really good chance to actually interact with everybody in the class and work with different people each time, whereas on campus, you're working with your syndicate groups at the same time. Each semester it changes up, but this gave us a chance to really work with more people on a greater basis. Um, I think one of the things I really enjoyed about the online MBA in comparison to on campus was it was a lot speedier. I think everybody, because they are working full time, we just want to get, our, you want to get your work done. You have other responsibilities, you have a job. And so it was very focused and you would have a group meeting, you would say what we're going to do, then you just go out and do it. Whereas it takes a bit longer, as I'm sure most of you would know, when you're sitting in a room with people, it doesn't just say, right, we're doing work. You, you chat, you, you get distracted quite a bit. And I think because people doing the online MBA, they're still working at the same time. They're choosing to come and do this education on top of their work. They're very focused and they're very dedicated and they really just want to get it done. Um, obviously, the on-campus MBA, we're extremely focused as well, but we don't have those other responsibilities. We've been lucky enough to actually take a year, 15 months out of our lives and just solely focus on the MBA. Sorry, I wrote a few notes. Um, <laughs> the Content-wise, I can't speak because I didn't do economics in, on campus as well, but talking to my peers, it seems very similar. And the caliber of assignments and everything, that's the same. You still have an individual assignment, you still have a group assignment. And Lauren, so she, I learned from her and it was great. You still had, you could see what she was writing, that it was able to swap between. And there was never, you didn't feel as though you were just being, you're watching a video of someone because it is interactive. You really get the feeling that you're still in class. Um, I think if I still was working, if I didn't have the option to take off the time in my life, I definitely would do the online MBA because it is very well run and it does fit into your life very well. I was still working when I did the paper over summer and it really just, because it is the same content, it makes the on-campus MBA a lot more flexible to be able to swap between the two. And that's, I think, one of the main, what they've done very well is the quality, it's on par. Ah, uh, yes, it's on there. Uh, 
Okay, thanks, uh, Hester. So, um, yeah, my name is Scott Middlemas. I currently reside in a small town called Cambridge, which is in the, the Waikato, up in the North Island. Um, I am a student in the first cohort group doing the online MBA program. Uh, we began in May last year, May 2015, and we're currently on to our 10th paper out of uh, 12 core subjects. And I'm just going to speak for a couple of minutes about why the online version of the MBA works um, so well for me. So just quickly a bit about myself and why the online MBA was really my only realistic choice um, for, for study. So I'm a lawyer by trade. I completed an LLB and a BA in criminology and history at Victoria University in Wellington um, in the early 2000s and then a Master of Laws with First Class Honours in Auckland um, a bit later on. I practiced law for a couple of years and eventually I decided I wanted a bit more variety and to get out of the office so I joined the New Zealand Police. I spent a couple of years on the front line before moving into the Criminal Investigation Branch in South Auckland where I'm currently still based um, as a detective and we deal with everything from pretty much homicides, um, robberies, serious violence, through to sexual assaults and serious child abuse, which is not very nice. Um, really enjoy the police. Uh, got no intention to leave. It's a great job. Every day is different. And basically, I get paid to do real interesting things and to interact with some really interesting characters. I um, also work part time as a legal officer with the New Zealand Army. Um, I've been doing that since about 2013 and I've previously spent nine years as a reserve infantry soldier with the Royal New Zealand Infantry Regiment. Also totally love this position. Um, the Defence Force is such a unique place and the kind of work you do you'd only ever find it in that sort of a setting and plus it was the only way that I could still practice law part time without having any sort of conflict of interest with uh, anything with the police. I um, also have two young young lads, we've got Jack who just turned two the other week and Will who's coming up 10 months, so for those of you that are good at maths, that's a 15 month gap between the two of them, wondering what we were thinking, but um, so far it's going alright. At the moment I'm on daddy daycare leave and I spend my days looking after them while my partner Susie works some um, absolutely horrendously long hours as a doctor at Waikato Hospital. Um, I'm due to go back to work part time soon, working just in the weekends, two 10 hour shifts uh, in the, every weekend, um, which means basically I'm going to be looking after the kids Monday to Friday and then working Saturday, Sunday. So essentially seven days a week on the job. So I've always wanted to study business, but with two jobs, two kids, better half who's a doctor, plus we've I think we've moved and lived in three different regions in the North Island in the last couple of years um, due to Susie's training and her work commitments. So the only possible way I could fit any further study in was through an online program. Um, when I sort of initially looked at it, I wanted to be sure that the, any qualification that I invested in or put time into would be able to stand up as being reputable and not just from an unknown internet course provider that no one's ever heard of and has no accreditation. So for me, that was the real beauty of the Otago Online MBA. It had the credibility of coming from one of the better universities in the Southern Hemisphere, while still having the flexibility of the online course. So I mean, has, has it met my expectations? Most definitely. Um, there's no mistaking that doing an MBA by whatever means, whether it's in class or online is a big commitment and I've definitely found it challenging at times, but also very enjoyable. Um, even though I'm only two thirds of the way through, um, I've been able to apply some of the things that I've learned in both roles with the police and with the New Zealand Defence Force. And that was um, similar to what Julian said in the video that you heard at the start. The online nature of the program is the only thing that really allows me to fit study in with work and family commitments. Um, there's no two ways about that. There's absolutely no way I'd be able to physically attend classes in the evening, putting aside that it's, I think it's 1,200 kilometres between Cambridge and Dunedin. But um, with the online program, I can just put the kids to bed and I can still be in the house looking after them while I'm attending classes in the office, which basically creates a minimal distraction disruption to our lives um, and likewise if I'm having to work a late shift I can just log on at work and attend classes from one of the station interview rooms or at my desk which I've done on a number of occasions and that 
of course, is a uh, big thanks to the support from my direct supervisors and our um, the county's Manukau Police District Leadership Team, many of whom have unfortunately been interviewed or have been the subject of many of the assignments that I've written in the 10 papers during the course, much to their horror. Um, and I mean, uh, along with various police stations, uh, I've also attended class while I've been staying at the Devonport Naval Base while I've been working there in both Trentham and the Linton Army Camps in the barracks. Not to mention, I think, hotel rooms everywhere from Invercargill up to Taranga and everywhere in between when I've had to go away for work for one reason or another. And in our cohort, in the first cohort, um, we've had classmates and lecturers who've attended classes from pretty much every corner of the country and from all sorts of other locations. I was just thinking about it the other night as to where we've had people come in from. And we've got heaps of Australians, uh, Brunei, the UAE, Canada, uh, Julian, who you saw running down Mission Bay at the start of the, the video, he used to come in from Vienna when he was over there running marathons. Uh, England, we had a lecturer who was based in Beijing. We had one one of our classmates come in from a 7-Eleven in the middle of Taiwan, and even one who used to come on Zoom while he was on the motorway stuck in traffic in Qatar in the Middle East. Um, and so that for me really just highlights just how flexible online learning can be, which is just fantastic um, if you've got my sort of uh, commitments. So finally, what would my advice be to others who are considering the online or the Otago online MBA? Um, firstly, the webcam is a bit daunting to start with. Uh, you soon get over that though, especially once you form the relationships with your course mates through the breakout sessions and the syndicate work. I've met, met some absolutely terrific people from all the different cultures and walks of life. And I know a lot of us will be mates long after the course finishes. Um, it helps having the end of year things. I was on one of the photos there at the beach with um, one of the doctors and also the young lady we saw at the start of the video who's in one of the other cohorts and we'd just been chased down the beach by a seal just before that photo was taken. Um, more advice, I think if you could think you're able to handle the commitment of studying for an MBA, is just go and do it. Uh, the online course is so flexible, it's really taken a lot of the pressure off. Um, as Julian said at the start, you know, you can just push a button and you're in class straight away. You don't have to go drive anywhere, look for parks, walk in, get wet with the rain, whatever. The technology that we use, the Zoom program, is really reliable now and it's user friendly even for a um, technophobe dummy like myself. Um, the admin staff are always helpful and they're always only a phone call away. And same with the tech support people who sit through every single lecture for the whole entirety to make sure it's all running smoothly and if there's anything that looks like it's going astray they'll jump in straight away and try and fix it online there and then so i can't speak highly enough about how, uh, how good those guys are you know, i mean being being in the first online cohort there was a bit of a test and adjust going on at the start especially for the first couple of papers but however in my opinion now the it's, it's all been ironed out and the Otago Online MBA has is, is been an absolute complete success and I can really see this method of course delivery as being the way of the future, um, not just for MBA but for other subjects uh, and papers at both undergraduate and postgraduate level, especially uh, arts, humanities, law, uh, business. Um, obviously there's some restraints, like you can't go online to cut into a cadaver or drill into someone's teeth, but I mean, for the humanities and arts, it's definitely a, a viable option. And I mean, in short, even with juggling all the study, work, family commitments, the online MBA is uh, far more rewarding than I ever thought it would be. Um, and I'm really glad that I uh, took the leap a couple of years ago and signed up and that I was accepted. So that's pretty much all I've got. So thank you. So, uh, do we still have time for question? I have a minute for question. So, you were asked to how long the Yes. So, for what happens if somebody, do you podcast or have We 
record the lectures, although we encourage the students to attend every lecture so that they could uh, be involved in the interactive element of it because uh, aside from the lecture to student teaching, there is also the element of learning from other students because they all come from different backgrounds, different industries. So that uh, interactive uh, element is very important. So we do encourage students to attend every lecture. But yes, if they do have to miss a lecture or two, they can catch up with the recordings. Which is one benefit of the online versus the on-campus? Yes, the on-campus you said. Okay, are there any further questions? If not, I'm going to just sum up by, by thanking my students, Zoe who is here, Scott who is uh, at the other side of the wall, and uh, Jeff, who is present here to help me with the technical stuff, otherwise I'll be uh, feeling a lot more nervous. Um, and finally, um, when, oh, how do I minimize this? Oh, that's a minute. Okay, when I first started trying to put together the online MBA, I volunteered for for the job, but I don't know anything about online education, so there were a lot of people who, ha I ha who had been very helpful along the way, so, uh, Sarah, who um, has pointed us in the right direction and put us in contact with uh, colleagues who has the experiences, so she has been very instrumental in at least building my confidence in proceeding. And of course, the e-conferencing team, particularly Jeff and uh, David, who has been uh, very supportive of us. And without that technical support, I think uh, we may not have been able to get it off the ground. And of course, we have also colleagues who shared with us their, their experiences, of which team is one of them. He tell us about his experience and share with us his experiences, how he has conducted, and uh, what are the things we need to look out for. So I would like to thank all my colleagues uh, for the help during that stage when we are still discovering and trying to figure out what we want to do.